What's going on you guys? What you just saw was my animation that I created during the Unreal Fellowship for animation. This was an incredible uh, three weeks of lectures, guest speakers, live labs, and you know community support. It was just like an incredible experience and I want to share uh, my project that I did. So as you can see, um, you know, it's a little pirate thing. My inspiration for this was actually the Epic Games uh, Marketplace. I, I saw that they had this free asset for the pirate ship. So I was like, man, this, this asset pack is like super sick. And I was like, why not? Why not play around with uh, in that world? And they also had this pirate character that was for free. So I put that into the, char uh, into the scene and decided to approach, um, originally wanted to do a basic animation because I'm not an animator, I've never really done animation before. So I wanted to kind of keep things simple. But as I kind of got into it, I was like, man, like you got a pirate ship, you got a pirate, you got to have them swinging <laughs> from a rope. And that's when I decided to do the action, the, the whole animation as just like a pirate swinging on the rope and then, you know, landing on the pirate ship on the deck. So that's what you see here. Um, it got a little bit more complicated than I expected. And yeah, I really didn't have enough time to really get it perfect um, for a number of reasons. One was which also um, I just had a baby in the middle of the fellowship. So um, that kind of took up a lot of the time that I originally had wanted to spend on this. But I'm just gonna dive into the project so you guys can see what I did and we'll talk a little bit about it. All right, so here we're inside Unreal Engine 5.2. This is what we all worked in. And let's pop out of this. So my project is going to be a little messy, but you can kind of see this is the uh, free asset pack um, from last month. Just a pirate ship. It was already lit, so I didn't really do too much here. And you know, the fellowship was really focused on animation, so I didn't want to spend too much time doing the other stuff. Um, but the way I got this was, I I first ran a bunch of tests just to kind of play around with um, different types of animation to see what I wanted to do and where on the pirate ship I wanted to um, have the action. And then I decided to have the guy up here seem like a good spot and swing down and I thought it would be cool for him to kick this captain which is actually the same character just with a different outfit um, and kick the captain into the water and then land on the deck and once he got on the deck I was like well you know it seems kind of empty so I had to put a few of these uh, characters in the background added some uh, VDBs flames and with some smoke effects and that's pretty much it so the way I did this animation is that I first did some mocap. I used a combination of, well, actually, yeah, I, I tried Move AI, I, and I have the Rococo suit, you know. So I, I recorded um, Rococo motion capture for the part where he's, like, jumping off. And then... I tried to get some animation of him actually swinging. Like this swinging part was a little difficult because the legs have to come off the ground. So one thing with um, you know the IMU suits like Rococo or, or XNs or any of these IMU systems is that it's really not great when your feet come off the ground. So it's not really made for this type of animation. So what I ended up using was actually a Mixamo um, animation for this swinging part. Right, because they have one that's like super nice and it's like the guy swinging on a rope, perfectly arched. So this is all Mixamo and I did clean up on it um, to make adjustments for sure. And then the um, this pirate when he gets kicked, I did an animation with um, the Rococo suit. I basically just jumped onto my bed, like did like a little back belly flop. So I, I basically mo capped that guy. Like that action. His legs weren't like this. I had to reposition the legs to make it look like that. And then I did mocap for um, these guy, this guy back here where he's like kind of kicking or chanting, like that kind of thing. So that's all mocapped with cleanup though, which I'm gonna get into in a second here. Um, so the most difficult part about this animation was 
the rope because I have to put the rope in the guy's hand and the way I did it was I used constraints so the rope is actually its own skeletal mesh and I created I, I basically had to skin this in blender so I took I took one of these ropes that was already in here I think uh, I think there's like something here I took one of these ropes there's there's one that's like a long one I think it's this one I took that brought it into blender and I basically skin the rope meaning I put bones within um, the mesh and then I did a weight painting on it so that you know it's it became a skeletal mesh then I brought that into Unreal and I built a control rig for it and I just followed a tutorial for this um, with a uh, fit chain on spline curve and pretty much this is what it looks like. It's super basic. Actually this was really just supposed to be a test but I ended up using it because I started getting too deep into it and then like I said I had a kid um, so I couldn't really go back and redo this which was my original intent. I was gonna go back and like really skin it properly because um, what happened was I didn't put enough joints so there's like this part at the tail end where it couldn't really bend properly. So, and you'll see it in my animation, you know, it's not perfect. Um, but if I had put more joints here, then I would have been able to bend these little parts as well. But using constraints, I was able to constrain the uh, controls of the, of the rope to the, the joints, the bones of his hand. And that's how I got the rope to basically be paired and attached in. I tried using attach, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. I think constraints is way better. Um, with the attach tracks, it just kept popping in and out, and there were weird things that were happening. Um, but once it got constrained, I used the controls to animate it a little bit because you know you, you have the um, IK controls, which make the rope move in a very like realistic way. And then afterwards, I used FK control down here to kind of you know make adjustments to, to make the rope fit perfectly in his hand because even though it was constrained there were still parts even right here right like it's not really in his hand he's kind of hugging onto it and look it's just like one piece of rope it's not in the full rope and one thing i would say is like you know for these animation things you want to just cheat as much of it as you can like if the camera's here you don't see that part then you don't need to have it perfectly because the audience is not going to see it right um, but yeah, and then I, I went into this character here, and I also used, um, he's got a control rig on him too. I, I basically brought the mannequin control rig and dropped it on him. But yeah, then I added additive layers on top of the control rig and made a bunch of keyframe adjustments to... Um, to really make it work. And here when the pirate gets kicked, I wanted his hat and his gun to fly off. And basically I made a blueprint out of this character. And then from the blueprint you can add, you know, the hat as a separate piece and the gun as a separate component. And then within the sequencer here, I was able to animate um, just using a transform animation really. Let's see, where is it? Okay, I have these as, um, organized into sub sequences. So the captain is right here. You can go in here. You'll see that the pistol is its own component, the hat. And I basically did a transform animation on it. So pretty basic. You know gets kicked and then the hat is here and then you know by the time he's over here I've made sure the hat was like just flying somewhere over there and the same with the gun and these were just you know still animations of a dead pirate um, I think what I had done was actually I simulated physics on the 
skeletal mesh and then I recorded that so that it was like a pile of um, basically the body laying on the ground and then I went in and I added another additive layer uh, using a control rig to really pose the hands in a certain way. See, I have a separate subsequence for the background animation, which is like these guys here. See that dead pirate? Yeah, I just use a control rig. And they're all the same pirate. <laughs> These guys are all the same. And then these are just uh, VDBs. Uh, the flames, I mean. And you can see here. Um, subsequence flames. So. And some smoke as well. I added the smoke, and these were all free uh, VDBs that I got off of Embergen. If you go to their website, um, you'll see that they actually have some free VDB downloads. So I definitely recommend uh, playing around with those. I love these; they're super like realistic, and you can really manipulate it to um, fit your scene. And that's my scene. Yeah, drop a comment if you guys have any questions about this. Um, you know, I'm still a beginner with animation, even though I went through the fellowship. There was so much information I learned so much, but um, I yeah, there's there's a lot still to learn, and I think a lot of it is really by practicing and doing. That's really when your skills and the knowledge that you actually learn are put into place.